Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today, and we're here to present you some latest updates. We'll start with an update on the GSE-4 test tank, which was filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized until failure, followed by on aero covers on super heavy boosters, and wrapping up with an interesting update on China's artificial moon for gravity experience. So let's start with the GSE-4 test tank, which was filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized until failure. Ignoring the recent massive undersea volcanic eruption in the Pacific Ocean, SpaceX moved on and blew up a test tank filled with liquid nitrogen at its launch facility at Boca Chica, Texas on Tuesday, though it's not evident whether the explosion was intentional. The striking explosion took place after SpaceX's GSE-4 test tanks were filled with liquid nitrogen and pressurized. The company normally uses their tanks to test the rigidity of material that they plan to use on the spacecraft. While it's not clear whether SpaceX was conducting a stress testing or not to pressurize the tank until failure, which resulted in a massive explosion and almost looked like something happened beyond control. If we observed all the angles captured of the event, it clearly shows cars and equipment nearby, so it's very unlikely that SpaceX wouldn't have planned to clear the area if they were aware about the planned explosion. Near two porta potties, one sharp-eyed observer was seen which appeared to have survived the blast. But this is also a fact that SpaceX has blown up their test tanks intentionally in the past as well. In June 2020, SpaceX blew up a tank as part of stress testing their Starship prototype, so the chances of a planned blast cannot be ignored. As explosions are just as routine when it comes to SpaceX, they also have a history of their rockets blowing up on its launch and landing pads. Irrespective of all these, it's good to see one produce massive clouds of nitrogen rather than humongous fireballs. Let's move to our next update. Super Heavy is built with thin steel shells wrapped on the metal box frames to protect the booster from its engine and Earth's atmosphere, mainly at the time of ground testing, liftoff, ascent, and re-entry. The most obvious aero cover slot over the top of six racks of equipment installed on the outside of Super Heavy's aft end giving the booster a sort of utility belt of hydraulic systems, pressure vessels, avionics, and heat exchangers. Unsurprisingly, those racks are festooned with electronics, composites, and thousands of feet of wiring and thin plumbing, none of which are particularly suited to sit a few dozen feet from the fury of 29 to 33 Raptor engines or near the leading edge of a hypersonic reentry vehicle. Beside the steel they're mounted on, the entire framework situated on Super Heavy's utility belt would start failing or be destroyed in case exposed to only a couple moments of the hypersonic buffeting and heating the Starship boosters usually experienced during the reentry. These are not similar to the Falcon boosters, which always use burns during reentry to slow down and generate something similar to a heat shield with their own exhaust. On pen and paper, SpaceX aspires to build Super Heavy in a way so that it could survive the fully-fledged re-entry without requiring any extra burn. To meet SpaceX's target, all the equipments at the exterior identified to be at risk should be shielded properly to survive the re-entry and achieve same-day reusability. Theoretically, that's the purpose of aero covers. SpaceX has started to install on Super Heavy B4. So far, Super Heavy B4 is just a few parts away from final completion and is about to be ready for static fire testing. The aero covers and Raptor heat shields are crucial for Super Heavy B4 to accomplish more than one test at a time without requiring any major repairs at the same time. It's not similar to Starship, 
which has tested three engines at the same time and only carried out a few six-engine static fires. In due course, Super Heavy B4 may test all 29 Raptor engines at the same time. Having approximately 30 engines involved, a minimal pre-burner testing will likely generate a massive fireball that could immerse Super Heavy's aft with flames. During static fire testing, Raptors typically generate smaller but still substantial fireball during shutdown, generating another probable source of damage to any sensitive equipments located anywhere on or in Booster 4's thrust section. Super Heavy aero covers could turn out to be as important for surviving static fires as they'll be for surviving launches and landings. We're looking for more information on when Super Heavy B4 may return to the orbital launch mount for wet dress rehearsal and static fire testing as SpaceX test windows scheduled from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on the next three days of this month. We'll wrap up with China developing an artificial moon for gravity experiments. China's Li Rulin, a geotechnical engineer at the China University of Mining and Technology, said that they're working on a vacuum chamber which will be filled with rocks and dust to imitate the lunar surface. It's the first of its kind in the world, and that it could maintain such low gravity conditions as the lunar surface for as long as you want. This artificial moon research facility of China will support them to simulate low gravity atmospheres using magnetism. As per reports, the facility scheduled for official launch in 2022 will use strong magnetic fields inside a 24 inches diameter vacuum chamber to make gravity disappear. Sources state the Chinese have drawn inspiration from the chamber from Andre Geem, a physicist at the University of Manchester in the UK, who had won the humorous IG Nobel Prize in 2000 for formulating a research that made a frog float with a magnet. Lee said, some experiments, such as an impact test, need just a few seconds, but others, such as creep testing, can take several days. That creep test will calculate the amount of a material which will distort under a constant stress and temperature. As we know, the moon's gravity is just one-sixth of its strength on Earth, so researchers are focusing for using the facility to test technology in continued low-gravity atmospheres before it's delivered to the moon. This will permit them to resolve any exorbitant technical strains as well as test whether particular constructions will sustain on the moon's surface. The test completed in the vacuum chamber will later be utilized to further develop China's lunar exploration program Chang. This project including Chang 4 and Chang 5. China has also announced that it will form a lunar research station on the moon's south pole within the year 2029. Geim's levitation technique, which is currently used in the artificial moon chamber, comes from an effect named diamagnetic levitation. Atoms are made up of atomic nuclei and electrons that orbit them in little circles of current. These moving currents induce little magnetic fields. Generally, the randomly oriented magnetic fields of all the atoms in an object, whether they belong to living or non-living things, neutralize and no huge magnetism can be seen. When we apply an outer magnetic field to those atoms, then electrons will change their motion, creating their own magnetic field to counter the applied field. If the outer magnet is strong enough, the magnetic force of repulsion between it and the field of the atoms will increase enough power to overcome gravity and levitate the object. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.